Hello. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome back. We're on our roll here with Osprey videos. We're going to look at a new pen from Osprey that we haven't looked at before. It came in just a cellophane sleeve and very well labeled, which is certainly nice. As we reveal the pen, it's a nice blue color, but we need to do something else. Some cellophane for those that enjoy that sound. So this is the Scholar, as you noticed. Very nicely done, as all the Osprey pens are. You got the logo on the clip. Very functional clip. Very springy. Easy to put over fabric. The cap comes off in oh, over two and a half turns, and we'll see a standard design. I call it the dual fold style, where you have a black finial at the end of the barrel at the top of the cap, and then you have a black section that matches everything. So it's a nice broad nib. And if it's anything like the other Osprey nibs that I've had, it'll write very well. I have high expectations. Yeah, it's uh, just an interesting classic design, classic pen. Comes in many colors. Here's some examples of the different versions of this pen that you can find on the Osprey site. One thing that's always interesting when you use a pen for a little bit is they've engraved Osprey and Scholar right above that cap band at the end of the cap. Interesting little touch. Subtle for certain. But it certainly identifies the pen. And I think that's nice. I wish every pen had some identification on it. Trying to find out what a vintage pen is can sometimes be extremely challenging. As expected, this is a cartridge converter pen. Unscrew the barrel and you'll see that classic Osprey converter. And as I've been told, the spring will no longer be used in uh, going forward, but the pens that I have and the converters that I have have a spring. It's a threaded converter. And as we know from my discussions, you know, there's a large opening in that converter which doesn't fit against that little extension at the end of the nib assembly. So when swapping nibs, there's going to be a lot of ink between the converter and the nib assembly. So always do it when you're up like this. It's a relatively light pen. So you look inside, we'll see that classic ledge that seals up against the section. We'll quickly reassemble it. And it fits fine in the hand, unposted. And as we expect, the cap seats very deeply, posts extremely well. It kind of adds some uh, interesting weight to the pen, but uh, certainly not back-weighted back at all. It's a very usable posted. So I think we need to ink this puppy up and everything's being inked with uh, Noodler's Navajo Turquoise. So stay tuned and we'll see how that broad chrome-plated nib performs. Now it's time to bring in the trusty LED light. We'll look inside the cap and we'll see that ledge. And also at the very top is a nice extension that probably seals up against that nib and uh, should keep the pen from drawing out. If we bring the LED light inside, we'll see that step right there and then that black piece. It's probably from that finial. Interesting color. So an obvious comparison would be between the Osprey Scholar and the Osprey Madison. The Madison costs you $5 less for the pen. 
The real differences in, in my perspective is, number one, the Madison comes in one color, one choice, and it has limited selections in nibs. Where the Scholar comes in many colors, here's an example, and also gives you the choice of one or two nibs, like the Milano did. So it's, it's more of an upscale type of pen. Yes, the Madison has a rollerball clip, which is interesting. Chrome-plated versions. And the Osprey Madison has the identification on the cap band, just Osprey pens, no model. But then it is a unique model unto itself. So one of the great things about working with uh, Osprey and reviewing their pens is you learn something all the time. And as I mentioned before, it's just great to work with a, a pen maker that is really into all the nuances. And it's an engineer, I really appreciate that. Didn't recognize or understand the real difference between the Madison is the Osprey, Milano, and Scholar were earlier models, and they were designed for the number five flexi nib, which this is an example of one here. If you compare that to the number six flex nib, you'll see that is a much bigger feed, which they needed to do to accommodate the additional ink flow needed for that larger nib. So this section in the Madison is much different and takes different threading than the sections in the Scholar or Milano. So in the package that they sent me, they sent me this section, which will accommodate these number five nibs. So your Madison will be able to not only take the number six nibs, but also the number five nibs and all the other nibs with this new section. So that's the basic difference between the pens, and I think it's really great that Osprey has updated the, the Madison to accommodate all the different style nibs now with this uh, section. So there'll be two sections. This is an example of the feed, ebonite feed that was in the, the assembly that I had the zebra nib in, which of course I took out to thoroughly clean it. And we'll put it back together and uh, save it for another inking up. And yes, I did get ink on my fingers, but it's one of those days. And I did use ammonia, as one of my viewers recommended, and it looked a lot worse before I used the ammonia. So that's uh, the main differences now. I think that I have a better understanding, and hopefully you do, about the place that the Madison has in a relationship to the Scholar and the Milano. While we're looking at nibs and feeds, I thought it'd be good to compare this ebonite feed to this injection molded plastic feed, which works the number six style nib. I'm just always impressed with the simplicity of the ebonite feeds, just a, a nice big channel with fins, which sometimes are close to the channel and um, Nathan talked about if you do connect those fins with the channel, you get more flow, but right now the flow is okay. And I just find it interesting that that plastic nib supports this number six nib, which is pretty big compared to this, uh, they call it a 5.5, but uh, the smaller flexible nibs, which of course have that little cutout. So I've inked it up with, as you know, Navajo turquoise. I've written with a little bit. I have to make a confession. The tines were slightly off. So I used my thumb to take the one tine that was slightly higher and bend it down. It took a little bit of effort, but I've now done that. So the nib had a little bit of scratchiness to it. Now it's as smooth as all the other Osprey nibs that I've used. So. I like transparency. The cap comes off in too many turns, considering that the Milano is easy. 
to Madison takes less than two, this takes over two and a half. So that's the difference. As we talked about, it fits nicely in the hand. I really like the sections that Osprey's decided to use on their pens. We'll give you the dimensions of the sections. I find it to be very, very comfortable. You don't feel the threads. There's really no step up. So you can hold it wherever you want. But that number six nib really works well from the distance I like to be from the paper when I write. Give you the weights of the pen. It is on the light side. And it does post fine. And like I said, I would prefer writing with this posted probably because of that extra added weight of the cap. But when I'm writing over the camera, we're not going to post. We'll give you the lengths of the pen to put things in perspective. Now let's put that nib on the paper. As you probably heard, it's smooth, writes nicely, and like I said, this is the only nib out of the six that I've used so far that required any adjustment. These are mass produced, so you do expect a few things, and to me, as a fountain pen user, we need to be an educated consumer, we need to understand the ins and outs of this analog instrument. Some of them are mass produced and some of them do have some variations in them. If you have particular requirements then please study up, watch videos and and learn how you can turn a pen that you may not like into a pen that you love. And that's one of the reasons why I love fountain pens is because they do respond to that personal touch and you can customize them as needed. I think we need to rate this pen. I'm going to give it a 9.1. It's a little light. It certainly, uh, you know, is of the, I wouldn't call it higher quality. Um, the nib is great. The nib gets one check, but you know, fit and finish is good, but it's it's a plastic pen. And part of my perspective is because I've been using the Milano Ebonite pen, which just is in a, another world unto itself. And it's a little bit more than twice the price of this pen, but I certainly think it's worth the investment if that's something that appeals to you and you think it would be worth spending extra money for. But you can get the same nibs in all of these pens. So that's the nice part. I think next we need to explore the Zebra Flex nib, and we're going to use this pen to do that with. Stay tuned. So Osprey sent me a number of nibs in this arrangement, which I think is great. And as you saw on the website, when you order an extra nib, they're going to send you it like this. They all have that protective little plastic sleeve. So this makes changing nibs very easy. Just unscrew the whole bit and screw in the new assembly with converter. Couldn't be any easier. You can also unscrew this flex nib assembly and you could have unscrewed the broad nib in the scholar and just screwed them back in and out. But I think it's great to be able to do this. You know, we'll put this aside. We don't have to take the ink out or do any cleaning or whatever. And let's ink up this zebra with that very interesting feed system, which runs out very close to the end of the nib, which I think is going to 
facilitate and help make this right better than any other fountain pen that I've ever tried that uses a nib like the Zebra Nib or the Zebra Nib. So I'm going to ink this up, obviously Navajo Turquoise, and see how it works. One of the nice bits about using these modular nib designs is you can just use that plastic cover. It kind of reminds you of a cap liner. You can use that to seal up your other nibs while you're writing with the nib in your pen. Nice idea. One of the things that's great about working with Osprey, pen nerds just like us, is that if I have a question or think about why a design is done a certain way, I can get a very good response from them. So here is the zebra nib. I have flushed it and cleaned it out. But what's important is that you also need to remove the nib and feed, and it comes out very easily. As you can see, there's still a, a fair amount of ink left there. So we're going to dump that in water. You can see there's a little bit of ink left at the spring, and I used a paper towel to go in there and try to clean that off. So that's important. When you're done using your zebra nib, thoroughly clean it, disassemble it. They use a, they have a knockout block, which supposedly they're sending me, but it's pretty easy to pull out without that. So the other thing I talked about was the Osprey converter. This is a spare one they sent me that screws in. has that very wide opening. And here's a standard nib assembly that has that standard uh, kind of like nipple at the end and they don't really fit together well but as you saw from the ebonite feed on the zebra nib and also the ebonite feed on all of their flex nibs there is no extension and they wanted a, a large ink flow between the converter and that ebonite feed to be able to give the right ink flow to the nib so what makes this nice is they said in the letter that you can just use a regular standard international converter and this is one uh, that I took out of a Franklin Christoph pen and it fits perfectly. So you have a replacement uh, converter and if you don't like the screw-in converters or whatever you can use that. So here is some writing with the zebra nib on Tomo River paper and I did that because on 80 gram rhodia paper we get some feathering and you do get some bleed through and this is 80 GSM paper you know the standard rhodia paper so I've gone to Tomo River one of the things to realize about a nice flex nib like this which is similar to a flex nib that you would find in a desk pen is that it's going to lay down a lot of ink and it's going to soak through most papers that you might be writing on. <clears throat> so I know you want to see some live writing, but I just wanted to show this which was written without having to have the camera between the nib and me. So we're going to just show you So I'm writing as slow as I can. No one would call this a smooth nib. But you can get some nice line variation. There's no question about that. It's definitely a soft nib. About as soft as they come. There does seem to always be some ink creep on the nib, but I don't let that worry me. This is just a unique writing experience. One that you really need a practiced hand to do. And this Navajo Turquoise may not be the best ink for flexing. If I had an ink to recommend, I would, but 
you know, you just got to experiment based on your writing style what would work for you. And it's just also good to make small strokes and then you can do some flexing. When you go a little bit fast, you're going to get railroading. No question about that. But just take it slow. Not a nib you're going to be using for taking notes with. But it certainly is a unique nib. And this works about as well as any zebra nib I've ever had in a pen. The other ones I haven't reviewed because they just didn't work well enough. So if this is something you're interested in, this is a very inexpensive way to get into using a nib like this to see if it's something you would like. And you can see how you just it just takes a lot of practice. I've been doing a lot of writing, so I checked the converter and pushed down the piston, so we have now have the ink saturating in the feed. As I mentioned, this requires a lot of practice. And I'm not any good at writing Spencerian or any type of script writing. So that's why I do these types of things. As you can see, it does pretty much hold up. And that's a pretty big line variation. I mean, this is really like an extra fine with no pressure. Here are the nibs I've looked at so far. But here we have the broad nib and that stub broad. You know, the broad nib is pretty broad. And here we have the Zebra G nib. Tried to show a little bit of the flexiness there. And as you can see from the schmear, it is the wettest nib of this group by a long shot. There was still a pool of ink left as I dragged my finger across there. So hopefully you find this little chart interesting and there may be more nibs added to it as we continue to explore the many nibs that Osprey offers. Another tongue twister. So I bought a box of Zebra G nibs and that looks pretty much identical to what's in the Osprey. So replacement nibs are easy to get and one of the things that you need to be aware of is ink will corrode and rust and these types of nibs do not have a long life when they're in contact with ink. So it's a kind of pen you would ink up and do your writing and then flush it out, clean it out, dry it out uh, and be ready for the next time you're going to use it. So hopefully you've enjoyed this look at another Osprey pen. So thank you for watching. Upstrokes are definitely, um, you feel that nib on the paper. It is a sharp nib. Hopefully this video finds you safe, healthy, and happy. Enjoying your pens. Enjoying your life, because that's the fun part. We've reached the end of this video, and again, this is a series, so there will be more. You can see a little bit of flare there, and I wrote a little fast, but then I wasn't pushing it that much, so the ink did keep up well. Definitely a unique nib. Works as well in his fountain pen as it's going to ever work in a fountain pen. So if this is something you're ever thinking about trying, uh, this is recommended. Look at that. Nice.